तो रिलेशनल डेटाबेस कंस्ट्रेंट्स ना ना व्हेन वी यूज फाइल्स टू स्टोर द डेटा फाइल बेस्ड सिस्टम लाइक समथिंग दैट यूज फाइल्स टू स्टोर द डेटा व्हेन वी मूव फ्रॉम दैट टू रिलेशनल डेटाबेस व्हाई वी डू दैट बिकॉज रिलेशनल डेटाबेसेस ऑफर फ्यू प्रॉपर्टीज एंड वन ऑफ देम इज database constraints or you can call it as database checks so it checks few property so that you don't encounter in a random issues you don't encounter random issues you don't encounter you don't end up in a random situation okay so it basically acts like a compiler for you like in any programming language before running compiler will tell you all the errors in your code right similarly relational data the database constraints in your uh, relational database it checks before storing your data it checks in advance that if it, the data has any mistakes or not so it will tell you before you are inserting or before you are storing your data okay so this is one of the important property of relational database the database checks the offer now there are few of the database constraints that are offered first one is domain constraint now before uh, going into the technical or detail to the term of the domain constraint let's first understand what is the meaning of the word domain in real life what's the word domain mean you can ask someone uh, which domain are you working in which domain are you in right now right so someone will reply that okay i am in engineering domain i am an it domain i am an edtech domain so domain is basically classification or category so in relational database domain means data types right the type of data that can be inserted in a particular column that can be inserted in particular column okay let's say you can have a domain a domain check there that in this column you can only have positive values so you can't have negative values in that column similarly let's say for a particular column you have uh, set the constraint that in this column only string values are inserted and now you try to insert enter a number in teacher value will your file system be able to encounter that no so relational databases checks this domain constrain this domain check in advance okay so let's say uh, if in that students table you have a name column and name is of string data type so you can't enter number here okay so this is domain constraint the data type type of data that you are inserting second one is entity constraint so how are real entities stored in your database rows in a table now how to identify rows primaries so entity integrity constraint deals with the validity of your entities like what entities you are inserting it's actually valid or not how to check the validity by saying that primary key should not be null and of course it should be unique so basically entity integrity constraint it deals with all the validation of your entity the entity the uh, rows that the uh, primary key should not be null it should be unique entities should not have any mistake any issue it should not be null it should not be uh, missing it should not be blank and it can it should be unique right so this is entity integrity constraint now third one is referential constraint referential integrity constraint it basically deals with foreign keys uh let's say i have this two tables uh in students table and i have batches table okay students table i have column like id name then batch id in batches i have id and batches name now now can i say that here 
batch id is referring to the primary key of the batches table yes now let's say if i try to insert a row like id 3 name and feed and let's say let's first put the values in uh, the id 1 2 and the batch is 3 okay and some name is there so let's say now i try to insert here student name and feed id 3 and batch id let's suppose 4 what will happen it will throw an error so this is the first referential integrity constraint it says that you can't insert a row you can't insert a row if the corresponding primary key doesn't have that present that row present there because for it not present here in the primary key and this batch id is the link it's the foreign key of this table so you can't insert the row for the corresponding if the corresponding primary key is not present in the batches table in the other table okay now second let's say now i want to insert like this uh id one name something and batch id two now now i inserted this this is correct now in some time uh this batch id two needs to be deleted it's of no use, no student there. So, uh, scalers thought that, okay, let's delete this batch. Can you able to delete it? No. So, second point is, you can't delete a row if the corresponding referring instance is present. Okay. So, first, what you have to do? You first have to delete this referring instance. This referring instance is deleted first. Then you can delete this. Okay. So, if a referring instance is present in the table, you can't delete this referred instance. Okay. So, this is referential integrity constraint. One is 2.1. Uh, this is very similar to entity constraint 2.1, that is key constraints. Key constraints basically deals with that keys should be weak. Keys should be unique. Okay. So, these are some of the constraints. Domain. The type of data that you are inserting, it's of correct data type. Entity, primary key should not be null. Referential integrity means two. You can't insert a row if the corresponding primary key is not there. And you can't delete the row if corresponding, you can't delete the primary key if corresponding uh, the foreign key table has that referring instance. The first, you have to delete the referring instance, then you can delete and the key constraint says keys should be unique. Now, let's understand another topic that is schema. So, schema is the blueprint of a database. What is blueprint? When you construct a house, what architect give you? Architect give you first a blueprint of the house. Like this is the, here is your bedroom, here is another bedroom, then here is your kitchen, here is your washroom, here can be your parking area, right? So, this is data blueprint of a house. House, how house should look like, right? So, why it's called blueprint first? It's called blueprint because traditionally the paper the architect used to give is of blue color. That's why it's called blueprint. Okay. So, blueprint is actually the constituents of your house. The constituents of your house. Similarly, schema is, what's the schema? Schema of house means the constituent of the house. Similarly, schema of database means Scheme of database means the constituents of your database. What are the components of a relational database? Relational database is composed of tables. So, schema is schema composed of all the tables that your database contain, then all the columns in every table, then, of course, the foreign key and the primary key of the table. Okay. So, schema is everything your database is composed of. Every table, 
every column in your table and all the foreign keys and primary keys. Okay. Now one question here: Will the schema contain data also? The data that present in your database will schema contain the data also? Try it once. Okay. Answer that in the comment section. Now. Okay, if the schema is clear, schema is the blueprint of a database, the constituents of your database. What the database is composed of? What are the different things the database has? The different tables, the different columns, the different foreign keys and primary keys, right? Now let's create a generic table. Let's take the example of a scalar database. Now, before starting your journey in a, in a scalar, what you are? You are a user to data. Scalar, right? So first is users table. Users table have let's say an ID, then name, then your university name, then your year of experience, let's say your graduation year, right? These are some of the information of a user. Now after user, you become a student. You enrolled in a course. You become a student. So students table. Now student is also a user, right? So will I have to? So should I write all the columns again in the students table? No, I should use foreign key. So student has ID, batch ID, and foreign key user ID. Okay, then batches table. Batches table has an ID and the name. Now, now how to this are this is the uh, schema of a table and all the columns. Now, how to identify primary keys and Foreign keys in the table. So primary keys are generally underlined. So in users table, primary key is ID. Students table, primary key is ID. Batches table, it's ID. And foreign keys are generally by arc sign. Like foreign user ID. This is the foreign key. Again, here this batch ID is the foreign. So this is the schema of us, a short generic schema of a scalar database. Okay. So schema is the blueprint, the design of your database. Okay. Schema is clear. Now let's move on to another thing. That is few operations that the relational databases offers. So relational databases offers four important operations that you can perform in any entity or a table. The four operations are CRUD operations. CRUD is create, read, update, and delete. Okay. And relational database also offer to perform these four operations on data in your database in your table sorry for uh, let's say uh, you can perform these four operations either on the table or inside the table inside the table means the data the actually the rows in the table the data in the table right you can actually create a new row you can read the data from the rows. You can update your rows. You can delete your rows. And either on the table means schema. So first is CRUD operations on schema. And second, CRUD operations on data, on the rows. So let me draw this again, CRUD. So in schema means you can create a table, create command. We actually do all these commands in action when we do SQL commands, okay? So create schema, create a table. Then you can read a table, right? You can show a table, this is show command. Update a table, update means alter. What do you mean by altering a table? Means you can alter some columns. If that say your column has ID, name, you want to change name from university. So this is the schema part, right? So third operations on schema, on the table. Then you can delete a table. The command is drop. Similarly, 
you can perform these operations on the data actual data data present like you can create a row you can create a row like student uh, id 1 university xyz how you can create a row by using insert command then you can read the data from the by using select command now you can update the data by using update command you can delete the data by using delete command so relational database offers to perform the four operations the curd operations on the data and on the table okay so on the schema you can create a table show a table and you can also insert a, a, a row there select the row update the row and delete the row okay so these are the four operations that are performed by relational databases right so now that's all pretty much about the relational databases okay so let's just sum up quickly sum up i'll show i'll now show a doc and we quickly sum up all that we have learned in relational databases right